Hello again and welcome to another video on the history of medicine. Coming towards the end of the course now, so not too many left. Now, what we're looking at today is technology and the advances, the changes, the progress from about 1950 through to the present day. Now, if you remember our previous video, we were looking at the first half of the 20th century. We finished round about the year 1948 with the setting up of the NHS, the National Health Service. And so for the first time, as we get to 1948, 1949, 1950, we get 8 million people who'd never ever seen a doctor because of the shortage of money. Now the NHS was beginning to change medicine. The government is spending a huge amount of money, better training, specialism for the doctors, nurses. They were improving the hospitals. The hospitals would be checked. Nowadays, we have the Care Quality Commission. We have NICE, and that stands for National Institute of Health and Clinical Excellence. Just use the word, the acronym NICE in an exam. And they are there to offer guidance, recommendations, and they decide whether a medicine will be bought or not. But most of this video, ladies and gentlemen, is all to do with improvements, progress, changes in technology. Now, here we have a stethoscope. Any ideas when the stethoscope was first invented? You might be surprised. 1816, over 100 years ago. But what we're going to concentrate on in this video are changes in technology from about 1950 through to the present day. And there are quite a few. Now, some happened slightly before 1950, but the influence and the changes have continued right up to the present day. Now, we'll start with number one, X-rays. There's old Sammy Skeleton there. Hello, hello. Yes, I'm not feeling very well. Now, we have x-rays today that not only can see inside our body and look at, for example, broken bones, but we also have x-rays today which can look at our tissues, our organs. Well, that's the advances today. They haven't always been like that. Any idea of the first x-ray? Well, if you said 1895, Wilhelm Röntgen, you bang on. OK, a German scientist. And there was a lot of luck involved in the first discovery of the X-ray. And Röntgen, one of the first X-rays ever, was of his wife's hand. And if you look it up in the textbooks, you can see quite clearly the ring on her finger, the wedding ring. Why are X-rays so important, do you think? What changes have they brought about? Any ideas? Well... We can see inside our body without having to cut, without having to do surgery. So it's safer, less chance of infection, of course. Also, we can see inside our body and then find out things. Aha, there's a problem there. Now I can act and sort that problem out. So x-rays, a first example of technology improving medicine. Second one blood transfusions. If you remember back when we looked at surgery and there were some big problems facing surgery back in the 1800s. Pain was one, sorted out by chloroform and Simpson. Infection was another, sorted out by bonus points if you said carbolic acid and Lister. But a third problem was bleeding. Now, Lister himself had tried to do this by using catgut to tie off the veins. But one of the big problems, and it wasn't solved until 1901, a man called Karl Landsteiner, and he worked out, he discovered that blood is not just universal. We have different blood groups. And once Landsteiner had made that discovery, it enabled us then to do more successful and safer and more effective blood transfusions because we could give the correct blood group O 
A, B, or AB. Now, when we move to World War I, because of Landsteiner, yes, they could do successful transfusions, but you had to have the patient and the donor together because there was no real way of storing blood and transporting blood. But after World War, sorry, during World War I, a man called Lewisohn, L-E-W-I-S-O-H-N, he works out a chemical called sodium citrate, which could be added to the blood and it would stop the blood from clotting and therefore the blood could be transported. So you did not need to have the donor and the patient together. The blood could be transported. Very useful because in World War I, no one's going to want to go to the trenches to give blood. So from 1917 onwards, the Battle of Cambrai was the first one. Blood transfusions were used successfully. And now, of course, we have a very successful blood transfusion service. And the National Service was set up in the 1940s. So number two technology improvement, blood transfusions. Now, number three, organ transplants. Transplanting organs, very successful today. The first one was way back in 1905, the cornea in the eye. 1954, kidney. 1963, liver, the first successful transplants. Possibly the most famous, 1967, over in South Africa, a surgeon called Dr. Christian Barnard, working on a South African man called Louis Wyshynski, 1967, the first successful heart transplant. Now, unfortunately, that patient only lasted, survived for 18 days because there was a big chance of rejection and he sadly died from pneumonia. Since then, we've made more progress as our technology and our knowledge have improved. And now people can live for years and years because we have something called immunosuppressant drugs, which stops our immune system from rejecting the new organ, in this case, the heart. So there again, we see progress. 1980s, we've got multi-organs. We've got heart and lung together. And in more recent times, there's been the very first steps to face transplants. So organ transplants, another example of technology. Now, another to do with surgery. What's this? Yes, it's a key. Well, what's that got to do with surgery? Absolutely nothing, I hear you cry. But there is, ladies and gentlemen, because nowadays we have something called keyhole surgery instead of making a large cut to go inside and have a look or to do the operation what they can do now is make a very small cut almost as if they've got here hey, there we go almost like a little fiber optic and right on the end which gets inserted into the small cut we have a camera yeah not as big as this obviously a tiny camera on the end of a tube that the surgeon can see inside. And again, that's cutting down on the, the size of the wound, less infection. So keyhole surgery, again, we see it's less invasive, it's better. I suppose you could say they are unlocking the key to success. Sorry, 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 sorry. I apologize for that. Now, an example of that, come with me, Back to the 1970s. Where are we? Come on, let's get my hat. There we go. Hello there. Yes, I'm a footballer in the 1970s. If you don't believe me, have a look. Da -da 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 da 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 Go and check what footballer's hair was like in the 1970s. You'll see loads of these ridiculous perms. Now, way back in the 1970s, if you were a professional footballer and you got an injury, say, to your cartilage on your knee, you'd be out for months and months and months because it was a very serious operation. You might be out for the entire football season, sometimes a year. The cartilage operation on your knee was a huge operation. Nowadays, that time limit is much more short. 
because we can recover quicker because quite often it will be done by keyhole surgery. At the time in the 70s, they probably said to the doctor, look, we need to improve things. I apologize, terrible joke. But there's an example of technology making things better. Oh, remove that wig, terrible. Now, something else. Plastic surgery, very, very big today. But again, it started due to war, World War I at first, because of the terrible shelling and the shrapnel in the trenches, they did more than 11,000 operations, normally on the face, to try to rebuild the face. A man called Gillies, Harold Gillies, a New Zealand doctor, does a lot of work on plastic surgery, World War I. That was continued into World War II. This time, not so much from the shelling, but from burns. Remember World War II, slightly different. More of the war was fought in the air. Many of the pilots were badly burned, but survived. So a man called Archibald Mackindo did a lot of work to try and improve the burns by doing skin grafts on their faces. And he set up a, a hospital and he called it the Guinea Pig Club where they're all there, all the wounded pilots together. So we see plastic surgery, another example of technology being improved. And we have all sorts of machines today. Now I mentioned earlier transplants. Sometimes, obviously, we have to wait for a, a, an organ to become available. So let's say if you've got uh, some problem with your kidneys, Whilst you're waiting for a kidney transplant, they use a dialysis machine where they give you the treatment which keeps you alive until the possibility of a transplant. Well, dialysis machines, another example of technology. Also, to go back to something I mentioned earlier, the heart. Nowadays, many, many people are walking around completely healthily now because they've had a heart pacemaker fitted. Now, a pacemaker, someone who runs at the front of a race to get a quick time. No, not that pacemaker, you fool. A pacemaker which regulates the heart rate. And it means that people can live a normal life now. OK, as uh, they probably said to the doctor at the time, come on, you can't beat it. As Michael Jackson didn't sing. So pacemakers, another example of technology. Gene therapy, I mentioned some of that in a previous video, the idea of replacing faulty genes. Huge step forward. In example, they're doing work on that now in muscular dystrophy, cystic fibrosis, Huntington's career, and also doing work in stem cell research to do with people who've had accidents and are paralyzed. Final couple, 1931. The electron microscope. Now Pasteur, back in the 1860s, used microscopes to see the microbes, the germs, for germ theory. But the electron microscope was far, far more powerful. And it enabled them to see very, very clearly certain things. And it led, for example, to the polio vaccination that I'll talk about in another video, 1954. Equipment, the final example. Well, today we've got scans. We can have CAT scans, MRI scans. We can see inside the brain without doing this. So people could take a scan of my brain. Wouldn't see much. We use ultrasound scans, obviously for pregnant women to check that their babies are okay. So we see a huge range of technology as the 20th century has gone on and as we've moved into the 21st century. What factors were involved in all of those? Developments in science and technology, of course. Governments, of course, being more interested now. The idea of laissez-faire has gone. Putting in money, research, research teams, teamwork, the role of the individual, geniuses working very, very hard doing experiments, put all of those together and we see the role and importance of technology. 
better diagnosis. We can spot more clearly and more accurately what's wrong. We can treat it better. We can offer better care. We can offer better cures. And as a result of all of that, ladies and gentlemen, millions of people are alive at this minute who, if they'd had these problems back in history, would have had no chance. They would have died. Technology, the 20th century, progress. Hope it's been useful. Take care now. See you soon. All the best.